Hello, brothers and sisters. My name is Shannon. I'm making a video uh, to uh, to inform everybody of something that you've probably heard a lot of. But just as everybody else felt the need to do it because God is wanting them to do it, I'm the same way. I, um, Jesus is coming back, and Jesus is coming back very soon. And I mean very, very soon. People are mocking it and saying, I'm sick of hearing it. You know, we've heard it all these years and he's not come back yet. But what you are failing to realize is this. When Jesus sat and spoke before he ascended into heaven, and he, they, they said, Jesus, why are you leaving? And where are you going? When are you coming back? And Jesus said, when you begin to see all these things happen, look up because your redemption or draweth nigh. That meaning, I will be back soon when you see all these things happening. It means with the wars, the rumors of wars, the famines and diseases and, well, and the uh, homosexualities and the hatred against each other. I mean, it just, the list goes on. If you look at your news and you see all the chaos in the world, that right there is what Jesus Christ was speaking of. And the way the, uh, the technology is just crazy. I mean, in 100 years, we went from walking and riding a horse to f now we got robots on Mars. Okay, that's what Jesus was speaking about. When you see all them things, look up, I'm coming soon. So Jesus is coming back. And all this stuff that's happening right now with Korea and Trump and people hating on Trump. You know, they say, it says in the Bible, they call what evil, they call evil good and good evil. People don't understand, okay? They hate Trump because Trump wants to get the um, immigration stuff in order and all this and all that. The good things that need to be done, they hate him for it, but yet they wanted to vote for a baby killer. Mm, that's the devil. See, that's the devil. That's what Satan does. De Satan deceives you. And we got all these uh, riots and fights in the street over, you know, uh, the flags and things are changing, then things are changing fast, and I'm telling you right now, it's not getting no better. You know, but when they start hauling for peace and safety, then destruction is going to follow right behind it. But I'm making the video to let you know that Jesus is coming back. And, you know, if you see my video and you felt led to listen to it, it's because the Holy Spirit's telling me to do it. I had to get my house quiet to make this video because I tried making it three times. And every single time my video would shut off or the kids would come in screaming or, but I'm, I'm determined. I don't care if I, my phones are shaking, <laughs> but I hope you hear it. Let me explain something to you all. You can't get to heaven by being good. You can't get to heaven by being a hard worker. You can't get to heaven by being a good mother or a grandmother or aunt or uncle or whatever. You, you sure can't get to heaven by um, by helping the neighbor across the street, by feeding the homeless. There's no way. There's no way of that. You have to have Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Not Buddha, not Allah, not all these other f crazy things people believe in these days. Stay away from the mega churches too, because the only thing they do is they preach on prosperity. They preach on, let's preach today of uh, to make you, ha what's going to make you happy? You, 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 you. It's not about God. It's not about Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, faith can't get you to heaven. I mean, faith gets you to heaven, but not your works. But once you're born again, you start having these things that you want to do. You know, like when I got born again last year, 2016, it hit me hard. I realized, oh my God, oh my God, I'm not going to go to heaven. I'm going to hell. The things that I were doing, and I thought I was a Christian. I was a fake Christian. I was walking around. I was being deceived. I was deceiving my own self. You got to be born again by spirit. And you know, when I got up off my knees, I felt it. I felt the Holy Spirit in me. And I had things happen to me later that just showed me how powerful God is and just how much he loves me. And uh, I, it's like instantly I stopped cursing. I, 
didn't think the same way anymore. I hated sin. I hate sin. Every day since then, every single day since that time I got saved on my knees in my bedroom, I have done nothing but crave the word of God. I have craved God and everybody around me notices that my mom is just happy. And, but you know, here it's, it's like this. A long time ago, a Roman jailer asked the Apostle Paul, I'm pretty sure you've heard this in the Bible. He said, what must, what could I do? What must I do to be saved? And uh, Paul's answer was quick. It was immediate. And it was to the point. And it was very clear. He said this. He said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shall be saved in thy house. And it was that simple. And you know, uh, a man named Nicodemus pretty much asked Jesus the same question. And he answered him by saying, you must be born again by spirit. Okay, you got to love Jesus with all your heart, your mind, your soul, strength. And as long as you live every day of your life, you got to carry your cross. I've let go of all the worldly music. I've let go of all the worldly movies. I've let go of the things that I know that I used to do. And I still struggle with some things. But, you know, we're all sinners. The Bible tells that tells us that in Romans, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that means that we're all sinners. Actually, uh, we were born that way. In desperate need of the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, there are no exceptions to this. We we must have Jesus. You know, the, the Paul said that the wages of sin is death. And it means that unless something is done about this terrible situation, that all will be eternally lost. And eternally lost doesn't mean just, you know, not knowing where you're going. That means in hell, fire, hell, screaming in hell for eternity. You know, um... God didn't leave. No, he, he loves us. I, I'm sorry. God loves us, every one of us. And it's his desire that not, like the Bible says, not any should perish, but that should all come unto repentance. God does not throw nobody in hell. Get that? I want you to understand that. God doesn't throw you in hell. You throw yourself in hell because like right now with this video that you're listening to, this is the Holy Spirit speaking to you, not me. They're using me because the devil's not going to do this. Now, if you know that you are lost, eternally lost, and you know for a fact that if you die tonight that you wouldn't know where you were going, you need Jesus, please. You need him. I'm not doing this to make myself known. I don't even want my face shown. I just know that I need to get the word out. Now look. I'm going to say a sinner's prayer. And if you want to repeat this with your heart. Not your mouth. Because speaking it with your mouth ain't going to get you nowhere. Say this with your heart. Okay. You ready. Now I'm going to repeat this. I mean I'm going to say this. And I want you to repeat it with your heart. Okay. Dear God in heaven, I come to you today as a lost sinner. I am asking you that you save my soul and cleanse me from all sin. I realize in my heart my need of salvation, which can only come through Jesus Christ. I am accepting Christ into my heart and what he did on the cross in order to purchase my redemption. In obedience to your word, I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead. You have said in your word, which cannot lie, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I have called upon your name exactly as you have said. And I believe that right now I am saved. If you repeated that prayer, you're now a new creature in Jesus Christ. In 2 Corinthians, it says that. 2 Corinthians uh, five seventeen says you are now a new creature in Jesus Christ. You have the divine nature within your heart now, which is the nature of God, which means that the Holy Spirit actually now resides within your heart and your life. The entirety of your life right now is going to be different. You're going to feel different. If you said that with your heart, you're going to feel different. 
you've been cleansed from all sin now, and you've been embarked upon the greatest journey that you could ever, ever undertake. Um, you got something to live for now, y'all, and something that which you can look forward to. I'm going to tell you right now, living for Jesus Christ is the most exciting thing that one could ever do. It has been for me. It's been the most fulfilling, the most rewarding, the most, it's wonderful. There's absolutely nothing in the world that could ever compare to this. You know, uh, oh, I, I can't explain it, how it makes you feel. There's peace. There's there's no fear of death. There's no fear of hell anymore because you know that God's got you. I'm a saint now in God's eyes, you know, and, but of course, Satan, the enemy is, is in your, of your soul, is not happy right now at all about you giving your heart to Christ. Uh, he's going to do everything he can to cause you problems. He's going to have you thinking that you need to run back. He's going to make you feel like you need to do the old things that you know that were wrong. However, if you will heed carefully to the uh, to, to, to God and read his word, I'm going to tell you right now, you've got to start reading your Bible. You cannot live a, a a walk with Jesus every day without reading the word. I read King James Version. This is my Bible right here. It's the Expositor Study Bible. Um, it's King James Version, but it's from Jimmy Swaggart. And I'm going to tell you right now, it is the best Bible I have ever had. Here's what, here's, read this. It says, I'm going to see if I can get my light on. And he made ten candlesticks, and the red is not in Jesus right here. And this means, when you see the red, that means it explains it. It says, and he made ten candlesticks. That means lampstands of gold, typifying the fact that Christ is the light of the world. According to their form, and set them in the temple, five on the right hand and five on the left. He made also ten tables. And that red, it says, the ten tables mean tables of shewbread. And he placed them in the temple, five on the right side and five on the left. There was only one lampstand and one table in the tabernacle, but he, but here there are ten of each. See how it explains it? Now you can go to um, Jimmy Swaggart's network and you can buy this book right here. It has helped me in my walk with God so much. I, I, I don't like going nowhere without my Bible. <sighs> but I hope that you... Um, said that sinner's prayer um, and meant it with all your heart. And if you want to share the video, please do to just let anybody, we need to get the word out. We need to help people come to Christ because time is short. People he's coming back and he's coming back fast. And the rapture is true. I don't care who believes it or not. The rapture is true. And I know the word rapture is not in the Bible. But you know what? I could go all day about that. I can make another video on the rapture. And I will. I will make another video. Hopefully next time it won't be all shaky. <laughs> so, please y'all, turn from your sin. Turn to Jesus Christ before it's too late. I did, and it was the best thing I have ever done in my life. It doesn't mean that life's going to be perfect. I have come across things in my life that I never have since I've been saved. But hey, Jesus has got me now. I love you, and I pray that um, I pray that you said that sinner's prayer with all your heart. Leave a comment. If you leave hateful comments, I won't read them. But it's not going to help me. It's not going to help you any because it don't bother me. I love you all. Thank you, brothers and sisters, and God bless.